Gamer. How's it going, sports gamers? Mike Straw, Sports Gamers Online here, and today's the day that a lot of fans have been waiting for regarding NHL 21. Now, we know the game is coming October 16th to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but now we have a lot of new information on what fans can expect from the game, so let's just dive right into it. But before we do, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss any of our latest videos. So the first thing to note is that Alex Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals will grace the cover once again in the series for the second time with his first time being on the cover of NHL 07. This likely has a lot to do with an overhauled mode that we'll touch on in a minute and the fact that he finally got that elusive Stanley Cup a couple of years ago. So now let's talk about the new features. We're going to stick with gameplay first and then we're going to move on. Now the gameplay according to EA will feature improved AI, improved goalie positioning and overall animations while having players have the ability to do things like slips, banks and chips to add new movement and new ways to get around defenders. There's also new skill abilities and deking with the Kucherov no longer becoming something you have to finagle in order to get done in the game. It'll now be an official deke within the game as well as the lacrosse goal or the Michigan goal that many have known about, but many have been kind of fearful of it ever being in the NHL games due to the potential of it being an overpowered move. But I don't think personally that EA Vancouver would put this in the game if they didn't have a way to balance it out. There's not a lot that was given about the gameplay. We do know that it will still be on the Ignite engine as it hasn't moved to the Frostbite engine yet, and we won't be seeing an engine jump until the series makes its way to the PS5 and Xbox Series X in the coming years. So now as far as modes go, we'll start with Hockey Ultimate Team and get that out of the way. There's a new mode in it called Hut Rush, which is creating a fantasy lineup and allowing you to get in games quicker and your rewards in this are going to be based on the skill moves that you use with various multiplayers throughout. It's just going to be a new way to play Ultimate Team, giving you some fresh feeling to it for those who play the mode and those who enjoy the mode. World of Chell. There's one thing that fans have been asking for. There's one thing I've been asking for for years, as this is my most played mode, especially the ASHL, and that's practice within the ASHL. Well, in NHL 21, we'll finally be getting that wish in two forms of practicing, which are much more than I was hoping to see. There's open practice with just your team against a goalie that can be either AI or user to kind of give your players a feel for the controls and get used to how each other plays. But the big one is scrimmage mode that'll allow you to take your team and play against an AI team at the difficulty level of your choice. With scrimmage mode alone, you're going to get a new flair of how EASHL works, especially for those that try and make it professional leagues and those who take part in various amateur leagues. You're going to be able to use that scrimmage mode to invite players onto the team and kind of have a tryout of sorts to get an idea of how they'll mesh and how they'll work with your players. To me, this is one of the biggest things that they could have done to EASHL aside from various attribute changes, but we'll touch on that in another video. But with ESHL practice mode being here, it opens a door of possibilities to really building a tight knit team and getting the most out of your play. Now, also in the world of Chell, there are new ranked seasons for the various offerings you have, which will allow players to earn rewards and work to compete in the new EASHL club finals and become a season champion. Moving on to franchise mode, the NHL series has come a long way over the last few years of making their franchise mode relevant. In fact, you can go as far as to say next to the NBA 2K series, EA Sports NHL is the second best franchise mode, and some players may think it's better, but to me, it's it's right up there as the number two franchise mode in all sports games. In NHL 21, EA Sports takes the next step with again addressing something that I've been wanting. If you followed any of our wish lists here on SGO, it's something I've been wanting, and that's to make trade deadlines matter again. And now with this new mini game of sorts that they're having, it seems like NHL 21 is going to do that. Players are going to now feel the pressure of making deals with real time updates that'll lead to important decisions for your team. You'll see the player market and value of those players fluctuate as the deadline gets closer, as teams start to decide whether they're buyers or sellers, with alerts coming in on various league moves. In addition to this, you'll also be getting reports of who may or may not be on the block 
as teams make runs to the playoffs. Maybe you see a team turn things around and go on a six, seven, eight game win streak and they go, wait a minute, maybe we'll pull this guy off the block after he's been on it because we feel we can make a nice run. And on deadline day itself, it's going to be a mini game of sorts with it starting on the day as soon as it starts and ending once the day ends, obviously. But you're going to be getting alerts and movement throughout constantly as you try and figure out, should you make the plunge and go after that player? Or do you hold off, but then you see him go to a division rival? It's all going to be new and interesting and hopefully add that shot in the arm of the trade deadline experience that really adds a nice boost to the game's franchise mode. Of course, until we get our hands on it, we really don't know much more than that about it, but I'm really excited and really interested to see what comes out of it. Now, lastly, Be A Pro has long since been forgotten since moving to this generation. In fact, it's gotten very little, if at any all, updates whatsoever since the Live the Life was in NHL 14. With NHL 21, Live the Life is pretty much back at this point. You're living the life of an NHL player that starts in the CHL, NHL, or even in Europe. You're going to have the ability to work your way into becoming an NHL star, whether that's performing well in the CHL and becoming a top draft pick, or you work your way up from a bottom six or fringe roster forward to becoming a superstar player in the league. Players will have to make decisions and deal with the press and media scrums after big and painful moments, forcing you to answer for the actions you take on and off the ice. James Sabalski, the game's play-by-play man, will also add a radio show inside the mode that'll talk about your career as it's happening, which just hearing about it gives me vibes of the old Tony Bruno show in the past Madden games that didn't really do too much to the overall game, but it added that nice authenticity to the mode, and I'm hoping that this radio talk show from Sabalski in the game will add to it as well. There's going to be an improved hub for navigation that'll make it easier for you to find what you need, The skill tree is returning with the addition of a dialogue option that allows you to work on various traits like charm. And then there's going to be a likability system that is going to be one of the most important aspects of this mode. And it falls under three categories of being teammate, management, and brand. Will you choose to hang out with your teammates to build chemistry with them on the ice? Will you focus on your brand and your off ice environment in order to get more endorsements and sponsorships from various companies? Or will you buddy-buddy with the coaches and do more hard work off the ice in order to improve your chances of getting ice time, find yourself being put on the power play or penalty kill if that's what you want, or other ways to get close to the management? Again, this all sounds like a very much improved lived life that we got back in NHL 14 seven years ago, but now we just need to hope that it's not scrapped like it was the last time on a console jump and that this is just the start of what they plan for NHL 22 and beyond. But for now, it's clear whether you like the game or not, they're making an effort at EA Vancouver to give fans what they've wanted. It may have taken some time, but we also have to remember that the NHL team is the smallest development team at EA Sports, and it's not really all that close. So getting what we want here is finally a good step in the right direction as far as be a pro franchise mode again has come so far over the years world of chell increases and the focus isn't directly all on ultimate team which in my opinion is the reason we get these improvements elsewhere but now i want to pass the questions off to you what do you think about everything we know about nhl 21 so far knowing that there is more to come and more deep dives as we get closer to the game's october 16th release And again, subscribe to Sports Gamers Online and be sure to turn on your notifications so you never miss any of our latest videos. And as always, visit our website at sportsgamersonline.com.